Good morning. Thank you for making it out on this very chilly, cold day. A little bit icy out, too, especially in the parking lot. Um, I only slipped once on my way over, by the way. Only once, and I didn't fall. Okay, I caught myself before I fell, so, so I was happy about that. Um, I do not have any announcements regarding the service itself this morning, uh, so let's begin with our opening hymn, Holy Spirit, Light Divine, 496. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. It is my privilege, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, to announce God's grace to all of you. All of our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. 
Please remain standing for our hymn of praise, number 394. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture readings. Testament reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no frequent vision. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. 
the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now that we have heard God's word, let us now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our children's message. And I think it's just going to be me and Jocelyn today, but that's okay. Just the two of us today. It's a cold, yucky day out today. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> but I still prefer to sit down when I'm doing this. Okay, so I've got a question for you, okay? Uh, it's a tough question, especially because your dad is right behind you, okay? How good do you listen to your mom and your dad? Pretty good? Sometimes good? Sometimes not so good? So-so, yeah, so-so, yeah, so-so. That's probably how I was when I was your age, yeah. So-so, maybe, maybe not so-so-so. Listening to parents can be tough, can't it? Because sometimes they tell us things we don't want to hear, don't they? You know, things like do your homework, clean your room, you know, stuff like that, right? And sometimes it can be hard, like if we're going shopping with mom or dad, and we see something we really want, we go, ooh, ooh, ooh can I have this? And they say, no. And we don't want to hear no. And so we're like, oh, please, please, can't I have this? And we ask over and over again instead of listening to them. When they say no, we ask over and over and over again, don't we? I still sometimes do that as an adult. You know, if I don't hear the answer I want to hear, I keep asking, oh, please, please, can't we get this or can't we do this? It's hard to listen to adult, to parents sometimes, isn't it? In our Old Testament lesson for today, Samuel listened God. God called his name, and he goes, he goes running over to Eli and says, here I am. And Eli says, that wasn't me. Go back, lie down. And he did that three times, and then finally Eli said to him, oh, that's God talking to you. When, next time that you hear him say Samuel, say, speak, for I hear you, for I li I'm listening. And so that's what Samuel did. When God called him, he said, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. But listening to God can be a lot like listening to your parents. It can be hard sometimes, right? Because sometimes God tells us things we don't want to hear. Things like, honor your father and your mother. <laughs> you know, we, we want to honor them, but we also don't want to listen to them sometimes, right? You know, even as adults, we don't listen to our parents a lot of times, right? Um, you know, God says things like, don't take my name in vain, right? And these are things that we don't want to hear, and yet God still speaks them to us and we need to listen to them. And the thing is, is if you really listen to God when he says things like that, what he's saying really is, I love you and I'm going to take care of you. And if you really listen to your parents, even when they tell you no, even when they're saying, go do your homework, if you really truly listen to them, what they're really saying to you is, I love you and I'm going to take care of you. Okay? And that's the same with God. And so that's why we should be listening to God as well as our parents. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, sometimes it is hard to listen to you. Sometimes some of the things you tell us can be difficult for us. We pray that you help us to listen to you just like Samuel did, so that we can hear you say to us, I love you and I forgive you. For in your name we pray. You can go back to your seats, and we'll continue with our next hymn.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, dear Lord. Amen. Our text for the second Sunday after the Epiphany is our Old Testament lesson, as it was read earlier. I do have a little bit of a caveat before I, before I uh, uh, start the sermon here this morning. When I was preparing my message uh, this past week, um, I was doing so from my commentaries and from, from the Hebrew uh, uh, of the Old Testament and stuff. I didn't look at how the, 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 the ESV translated this passage and, until this morning. And then I looked and I saw what it said and I go, oh, that undermines everything I'm saying in my message. Because I was looking at other translations and I was looking at the original Hebrew. I'm not so big on the way that the ESV has translated at least one of the words in our Old Testament lesson. You'll understand what I'm talking about when we get there. So I had a professor at the seminary by the name of Professor Nagel. Um, Professor Nagel, I, I think I've talked to, about him before with you guys, but uh, he was what some people call an auditory learner, uh, meaning that you know he learned best by hearing. And so he had this habits, these habits, where he would not look at you when you were talking to him. Okay, as a matter of fact, he wouldn't even look at you while he was talking to you. Okay, um, but like if he called on you in class. You, you could start answering to him, and he'd be staring off out into the, out the window or something like that. And you're kind of going, well, is he even listening to what I'm saying? You know, you'd be, you'd be wondering, what in the world is going on here? Um, he, was, he, he would sometimes face the chalkboard while you were talking and kind of rock back and forth. Uh, but he would do a lot of things, but he would never, ever look at you while you were talking. And so it was really difficult to know whether he was listening or not. And I've discovered that I'm actually kind of similar to that. I listen better when I'm not looking at the person who's talking to me. If I kind of just look off to the side or down a little bit, rather than looking directly at the person, I can actually hear and listen to them much better because I too am an auditory learner. There is a difference between hearing and a listening. And go ahead and put up our next picture, please. There's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is simply the physical ability to use your ears. Listening takes concentration. It is a skill you can and should develop. To actually listen, you need to not only hear what the other person is saying, and understand what the other person is saying, but you need to remember what was said and apply it as well. Just because you hear a sermon doesn't mean that you listened to it. Just because you hear your parents tell you to do something doesn't mean that you have listened to them. Listening takes a lot more than just hearing. Okay? And that's why I find this passage from Samuel so interesting. Because he says, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The ESV, ESV, for some reason, translated it, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears, which undermines everything I just said. But, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel is telling God there, not only will I hear your words, Lord, but I will take them to heart, I will apply them to my life, and I will try my hardest to obey them, to follow them. Samuel was ready to listen. How well do you listen to other people? And I mean really concentrate on what they are saying to you. Or are you one of those people who lets their minds wander while other people are talking? Or are you one of those people who is thinking about what you're going to say to them next once they stop talking or once there's a break in the conversation rather than actually truly concentrating and thinking about what he or she is saying to you? Do you remember what people tell you? Are you good at listening to others? How well do you listen to God? God has a lot of important things to say to you in his word. 
One of those is, of course, the Ten Commandments, right? And sometimes those Ten Commandments are easy to listen to, aren't they? You know, things like do not kill, do not steal, do not commit adultery. You know, sometimes they are easy to listen to. You know, we'll listen to those easily, right? But sometimes those commandments can be hard to listen to also, can't they? Have no other gods before me. You know, and essentially put God first in your life. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Honor your father and mother. Those can be hard to listen to, can't they? Another aspect of God's word, God's law, is, that is difficult to listen to is this one. Repent. Right? Instead of realizing that we are sinners needing God's forgiveness, we think, oh, you know what, I'm not such a bad person. You know, I haven't killed anybody, I haven't stolen anything, I haven't committed adultery. And so for some people, it can be hard to listen to those words, repent, turn away from your sin. Or perhaps, perhaps you're one of those people who find it hard to listen to God's gospel, either for yourself or for others. Does God really forgive me for everything? All of my thoughts and words and actions, if God really knew what I've done and what I've thought, would he really forgive me? And so we don't listen to his words of love and mercy and forgiveness. Or for other people, you know, how can God forgive that person? Doesn't God know what that guy did to me? How could God forgive him? The truth of the matter is, is, we don't listen to God as well as we should, do we? You know, we don't open our Bibles enough and let him talk to us. We don't put into practice what we hear in church on Sunday mornings. A famous author once wrote, the single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who go to church, and when they leave, they get on with their lives. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. We don't listen to God as well as we should, do we? We hear him, right? You know, we know we're not supposed to break his commandments. We know we're supposed to repent. We know that he loves us and he forgives us. But we don't really listen, do we? We know all of that stuff on Sunday morning when we're sitting in church and the pastor is talking to us. But we don't apply it to our lives throughout the week, do we? We fail to remember his love and his forgiveness during the week. God's forgiveness. It covers even our inability to listen to him. You remember the account of Jesus spitting into the dirt to make mud and putting into the deaf man's ears and telling those ears to be opened, and then the man could hear? Well, Jesus does the same to us, but in a spiritual way. We don't listen to him as well as we should, so he opens our minds and our hearts and our souls, not with mud, but with forgiveness. The forgiveness that he won for us on the cross. And when he forgives us, he takes away everything that distracts us from listening to him. All of our worries and cares and fears, all of our frustrations, all of our mistakes, all of the things from our past that we fixate on at times. All of our sins takes it all away so that now we can listen to him we can take his words to heart we can apply his word to our lives and here's the other thing about god even though we may not listen to him as well as we should he always listens to us he doesn't always give us the answer that we want to hear when we ask him for things, right? And sometimes it seems like he's a lot like Professor Nagel. And it seems like he's not listening to us, but he's staring off into the distance or something like that. And so sometimes it seems like he's ignoring us, like he's not listening to us. But the fact of the matter is, he is listening to you. And he is taking to heart everything that you say to him, everything that you pour out to him everything that you ask him. He may not give you the answer you want, but he is listening, and he always will. One of the hardest parts about being a pastor is that I don't really know who is truly listening. I have a pretty good idea, right? 
Um, you know, I might be 95% sure that a person is listening, um, but I can't really know for 100% sure who really is listening. My job is to preach and teach God's Word. It's to give you God's words for you to listen to. And I can't really know whom I have reached with those words until I get to heaven. The greatest gift that you can give to me, I think the greatest gift that you can give to any pastor is that you listen. Listen to God's word and take it to heart so that someday we will see each other again with Jesus in paradise. Amen. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Amen. Please rise as we bring our offerings forward and sing our offertory number 805. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Speak, O oh Lord, for your servant is listening. We don't always listen as well as we should, Heavenly Father, and for that we ask you to forgive us. Help us to open our ears to your word. Help us to open our Bibles so that we can see and hear and read your word so that we can apply that to our lives, not just the law which tells us what we should be doing, but also the gospel, which reminds us of your love and your grace and your forgiveness to us. Help us never to doubt that, but to always listen to you and hear those wonderful words of love. There's Jesus. One of the hard, most difficult times to listen to you is when we are suffering or hurting in some way. We pray for those who need your healing touch, for those who are sick or injured or hospitalized. Uh, we pray for those who mourn the passing of loved ones, especially for Pastor Balgaman and his family as they mourn Gloria's passing this past Thursday, that you would bring them comfort and peace in the midst of their sorrow. We pray for those who battle against addiction, for those who battle against loneliness and depression, that they may come to rely upon you to help them overcome their difficulties and struggles, and so that they may have hope and peace and love and comfort. Dear Holy Spirit, as we have now experienced our first taste of real winter this past week, we pray that you would keep everybody safe. Um, as, as the temperatures are plummeting, help, them, help everyone to have the heat that they need at home to keep them healthy and safe. As people travel on the roads and, and, and there are patches of ice and other things going on, we pray that you would keep them safe as well. Watch out for all of the workers as well who are plowing the roads and taking care of us, um, that they may be blessed in you this winter as well. We pray all of this in the name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn, number 739.
a few announcements to make before we uh, go enjoy our fellowship time together and then adult Bible class and Sunday school. Um, first of all, uh, we have elders meeting this Wednesday, 7 o'clock. So if you're on the board of elders, uh, please uh, join us for that this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m. Um, in a couple of weeks, our youth group is going to be having uh, the St. John's Olympics. It's going to be a bunch of fun and games that we're going to compete against one another in an Olympic style thing. It's not going to be like real Olympics or anything like that, but uh, some fun and fun games that we're going to play um, uh, in a competition sort of thing. So please come and join us. The more youth that we get there, the merrier it'll be and the more fun we can have. Um, we are still, of course, looking for volunteers uh, for different positions within our boards. Uh, so if you're asked, please carefully consider it. Um, if you're not asked, please carefully consider it and come and talk to me or to Sue if you're willing to serve as a trustee, treasurer, um, any of these uh, positions uh, that we still need people to help out with. Uh, the last piece of business I have is a sad one. Um, Gloria, as you heard in the prayers, Gloria Bogeman passed away this past week. Um, and so our prayers and our thoughts are with Pastor and his family. Uh, the service is going to be on Saturday at noon at uh, Emmanuel and Hinckley. Uh, the visitation is going to be Friday evening, 4 to 8, at the church as well. I have all of that information correct, right? Um, so um, so that's, that's when we're going to be doing uh, all of the services and things for her. Uh, please keep... And there's visitation before the service on Saturday morning as well. Um, so please keep... Uh, keep, keep all of them and the family in your prayers um, as well. Uh, we're going to miss her a lot. She was a very dear lady to, uh, to many people. So, um, with that, God's blessings on your week, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.